Welcome to Magic the Flavoring, the Magic the Gathering podcast, when we talk about all things magic, flavor design, and law. I'm your host, Andy Mann. Hello, this is Nathan Cancel. And we're going to talk about Modern Horizons 3. Hype, hype, hype. I mean, for, for, for everyone, it's been a while. And as with all things uh, magic related, when it's been a while, there's a new set out. So. <laughs> yeah, I kind of feel so. I do think we have slightly slowed down production of these podcasts again. I think we kind of go peaks and troughs. But. We do seem to hear every story and every sort of like set release, like with the flavor picks. Then we do do like one or two supplementary yeah, ones. You said do do. <laughs> so I am I'm happy with our output. The problem is the problem is, and I think a lot of creators, both big and small, both full time and part time, like us, feel this way. Is that because there are so many sets coming out, and you want to refine what you do? Like we could completely just sack off doing new release stuff completely and just every time we record just be like we're going to talk about the different kind of goblin ears that are in the multiverse and why we think it's actually this one that's correct and blah 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 you know we could really go like niche and do all that kind of stuff if we wanted to but then we don't get to talk about the new newness yeah exactly and the thing is especially when it comes to like uh flavor podcasts i think um it's kind of nice to see the tr- the the direction of the current state of magic you know like um sets like these where it's kind of a little bit nebulous, of where it's a little bit of throwbacks, it's a little bit of reprints, it's a little bit of new old lore, which we'll get into in a moment. Um, it's quite nice to see how 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 the how old lore is handled in the, with a new window, yeah. and then obviously with new planes and stuff, we kind of want to talk about the new new because it's a new interpretation. Do, do the car, do, is magic getting better at telling the story or worse at telling the story? Yeah, and I, it's funny. I've been I've been getting back into li- listening and watching other magic content because I kind of fell off some of it, the ones that I liked for a long time. And there are other Vorthos type creators that do these kind of studies on other things, like obviously Magic Man Sam from Mystic Studies does mm-hmm. like you know one every few months where it's like this big case study and then like the Vorthos cast who obviously we talk about and drew a lot of inspiration from in our early days they also do a lot of new set stuff to keep up with everything but I was thinking I was literally thinking about this today because I was listening to their episode about flavoured gems from like this this set just to kind of sort of see I like seeing where we overlap and where we don't sometimes mm. um, I usually listen to it after I've written my own notes not just to completely plagiarise <laughs> what they do um, but it's funny because I feel like they are the sort of Ivy League graduates. You know, they've studied a really niche thing, and they've got all these big old books that they're able to flick through, and they've put like little uh, post-it notes and everything, so they can like refer back to stuff and this kind of thing. Whereas you and I are the two guys down the pub who have done nothing but talk about this thing for about thirty years, but it's all like armchair knowledge. Do you know? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I haven't opened a book in years. <laughs> I don't know how to read. So, <laughs> so, but like, and that's not to do us a disservice. I think it's 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 just more like. They like they will have the things of going. This artwork is a reference to this, that, and the other, which is something we used to do a lot of. But actually, as we've gone, what actually makes us happier, I've found, or at least what makes me more enjoyable when we do this thing, is for us just to go. Have you have you seen this art? Have you seen that art? Why is no one talking about this artwork? And just you know, look, look, is this, and what does this mean for the multiverse? Literally staring at ridiculous artwork. Yeah, exactly. And I, <laughs> you know what, I'm happy with that. I we could go back to doing like really sort of deep dives and things. And I'm sure I miss. There's an episode. There are two episodes that are actually they were really popular at the time. I remember because they they spiked really highly. And that was the when Acoria came out. We did two episodes where we broke down the human societies and monster societies. I mean, that's for a set that no one fucking liked. And it was during COVID, which, you know, obviously meant that people were a bit more obliged to listen to us. But, like, we really went in deep. I really went in deep in humans, and I think you did monsters, if I'm correct in thinking. Or did I do the monsters as well? I think you did the humans, if I remember I did do the humans, yeah, yeah. I do remember. But I remember that was, like, a really deep, and it's sometimes a little bit existential, like, talking about what humanity is and then what the monsters are. And we did this two-parter. And we could do stuff like that again. Or we could just go, look at the cool new thing! (laughs) Well, yeah, I mean... That, for one, there's always cool new things, and it's really hard for us when we especially have this more kind of like, kind of like with Cinema Winds, of like try and find the enjoyment of thing in mm. things. Like there are sef- definitely like channels out there that are very like leaning into the uh, negativity um, that's kind of been building slowly over the last couple of years. I mean, I say that as if there isn't always people chatting shit about shit behind <laughs> behind yeah. everyone's backs all the time. But um, I feel like I feel like not only look at the new stuff, but also. We haven't got time. <laughs> like my, life, my life's been busy, um, yeah, it's, and I feel it's like a... real life is it, it, as as the pace of magic increases. Yes. The pace of my life has increased, and one of those things then has to kind of slow down um, in concert. And it's I, I think it's 
it's nice also to know that there's more stuff that we could be doing than being like okay forcing ourselves to do things weekly that and then kind of feeling like we'd burn out you know like i feel super excited to do episodes i'm like it's been a while and there's all this cool stuff that i want to talk mm. about instead of being like I don't care about this game anymore. I've been thinking about it for eight days, eight hours every day for the last, you know, 20 years, I mean, which we, is also we true. We do that as well. It's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, it, it doesn't feel like an obligation. Because the, like, with things like Thunder Junction, when there were lots of stuff that we didn't quite like, I mean, I, I feel like we... We we found joy in finding the things that we didn't like and why. Oh, we're martyrs, yeah, yeah. But like you know, I just I thought that you know it was still a fun exercise about something that we clearly cared about. Anyway, talking about finding the joy in things that maybe didn't deserve it. Should we look at this new Commander s- s- modern set? I really wanted to dislike <laughs> I because I don't I'm not a huge fan of these like drop in supplemental sets when because they have they don't have any lore in them like in terms of there's no accompanying story really. No, but. This set's so fucking cool. Yeah, <laughs> it's really got cool. so much good stuff in it. Yeah. Uh, and I've got so many cards which I could just drop in and talk mm. about, as I'm sure you do. Um, so let's let's get on with it. Well, I want to first... I'm going to first... The first thing I want to talk about quickly, and that's what you said about lore and how, like, a lot of this... So the last time we did this, we had those cards like... What was it? The neck, the Necro... The ne- Lazotep Sliver and things like mm-hmm. that. Cards mm-hmm. that insinuated massive massive Im- like had massive implications if canonical and then they kind of went oh, not really canonical don't don't take it at face yeah, value they're what ifs for this i feel like there's a little bit it's, it's not like that there's de- there's a- the stories within this that are actually absolutely completely and 100% must be must be true which then kind of makes the rest of the set feel like this isn't a what if this is more a what are they doing or what were they doing at that time rather yeah. than a what it, what could the you know, multiverse look like right now my main criticism for that, I've got a, b- a bad and a good. The bad being, where in the law story, like storyline, considering all three of the Titans, at, like at last point of of knowledge, yeah, you know, like at last point of knowledge, two of them were kind of burnt to a crisp, uh, pulled into the plane of Zendikar and set on fire. Yeah. So their physical manifestations, as far as we're aware, are deceased, gone, not coming back again. Yeah, and Emrakul's in a moon. So these cards are clearly not from now. They're clearly at a space, at a point in their lives, that, or, or a point in their in their physical manifestations. Yeah. That at that point, that makes me go, well, where in that timeline of Ulamog this the the, the infinite gear or Gaia or whatever, yeah, yeah. whatever, and then Ulamog the ceaseless hunger is Ulamog the Defiler in between that? Was the ceaseless hunger where it first erupted, and then this is like a little bit further down the line because Battle for Zendikar, as far as I'm aware, didn't. Didn't happen over a long, long period of time. As far as I'm aware, it shouldn't really take two Eldrazi, t- Eldrazi Titans that long to take a plane, even one as big as Zendikar. So even if it was a couple of months, mm. it's interesting that we've got a character, a legendary creature, something that is unknowable, and now we've got three different versions of it. So it, <laughs> it's quite known at that point, isn't it? Because we've we've got all these different abilities that it can do across its across its story arc, shall we say? And I find it interesting that we've got these extra kind of snippets of their character when it's like, one, they're not supposed to have character. And two, um, Emrakul the Wend- World Anew compared to Emrakul the Promised End, aren't that, isn't that just the same Emrakul from but the is, same point in well, time? But isn't, is, yeah. Is that not just how other people maybe interacting with them viewed those beings? Did Emrakul have all of those abilities at all times? We just happened to see her on a Tuesday doing Why one not? thing and then on Wednesday doing Big another thing. Big spaghetti mushroom monster. Sure. Like I kind of feel like I, I feel like you can't limit them. No, but it's interesting to say that like uh, like how like our I guess the meta of it right is that us as a, as a game system are converting these unknowable creatures into game pieces that we can actually use and and, and actually. But it's like when people used to say you can't make an Urza planeswalker card. Well, eventually they fucking did. Of course they did, and it was really powerful. Yeah, but yeah, still, yeah. it wasn't. It was not still going to quite hit the nail on the head. So, of course, you've got to have some artistic license. I I feel like it's different artisans painting different pictures of the same titan cool. on the horizon. And instead of just reprinting the same three titans that everyone's got already, let's add more Eldrazi bullshit to the pile of Eldrazi books. I'm not actually going to go into any of the individual cards. They're all nonsense. They all do absolute batshit crazy things. Yes. I don't know if you were going to. Uh, what the Eldrazi titans yeah. themselves? I actually only have one Eldrazi that I'm talking about. Cool, but none of them are the titans. No. Good, yeah, because they're cool, they do big splashy things, they're Eldrazi Titans. We've seen two more iterations of it, that's not that interesting. For me, it was more a matter of, it's, it's interesting, and it's an interesting thing to talk uh, to think about in terms of the arc of the story, right? Because compare that to the other thing, the positive, is that we've got another another suite of Flipwalkers. Yeah. Which is very, very cool, and this is, this is com- the complete opposite, because this is an actual point in time that we haven't seen of these characters, of where we can, you know, glimpse a little bit more of it. Or, I guess for one of them, Ajani... We already knew this event had happened. We already knew he went from uh, a Johnny 
kind of okay as a, as a dude. Well, I mean, we haven't. I mean, this is actually the only time we've seen a Johnny not as a planeswalker, right? Yes. So the Johnny Vengeant being the second one to come out, Johnny Goldman being the first time we ever see him, but that's yes. him a little bit older. And then yeah. we saw a Johnny Vengeant in Conflux. Yeah. Uh, or actually, I think it was in Shards of Alara, the original, um, uh, the original uh, set of the block. Um, and he was all red, white, and everyone was like, oh, what, what made him so angry? It's like, oh, no, no, that's, that's him. He used to be angry, you know. Mm-hmm. His, his mm-hmm. brother got killed, um, and that's what caused him to flip. And we obviously see this literally in the card of where he comes into play, makes a 2-1, Second flavor fail, actually, quickly. The token that he makes is mm-hmm. some leopard-looking lass, a woman, cat warrior. But the cat warrior is supposed to represent Jazal, his brother. Why didn't you just do a Jazal token? Interesting. What you would, would you do a legendary Jazal token? Well, no, but just the fact that the two one that Ajani makes is quite clearly supposed to be his brother, and then you go to get that token, and it's just someone completely different. Yeah. I mean, I guess the idea is that it might not be him, but it's, it's, pride, it's supposed maybe. to be, right? Yeah, I guess, I guess. And then obviously when the cat dies, he flips. So then you get the, the, the planeswalker side where it does some stuff with cats and, and, and then has a weird, like, sacrifice effect. I think all of them are fine. I don't know why we got Rao. Because uh, Rao's going to be in Bloomborough and they want to up his oh, stock. Oh, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I kind of find that both that and his saga, because each of them also get a saga attached to yes. them of Rao and the implicit maze. I'm like... Yeah, but what we're really focusing on Jace going through the maze in that set, like it's all well and good saying like Rao was also there. It's like, well, no, but I think I, I think you can <laughs> not to just contrary every point. <laughs> no, you make good, it. I like it. Good. I think you can say, well, yes, Rao was there because Rao was fucking there. Like, yeah, but is that an interesting it was, it was right, saga? It was right in the middle of being like, well, Jace is just Magic the Gathering now. Mm. Jace and um, Chandra, red and blue. True. It's like, well, no, there are other fucking planeswalkers. I guess to counter that, to counter my own point is that Tamio's saga is Tamio meets the story circle, which mm-hmm. is also equally kind of dull and boring and not that interesting the other three being uh Johnny fells the godsire i didn't actually even know that in the law that he fell the godsire oh yeah i did and he, and the, the carving is all in the the tooth of the godsire yeah. which is quite cool i think Sick. the idea is that everyone was like this fucking albino cat what a dick and he comes back and goes i just killed our, essentially our god and everyone yeah. was like oh damn oh cool. shit <laughs> um and then we have grist's kind of like turning what is it the hunger tide rises yeah which a very unpleasant idea to think of when you realise that all of those bits in that image are just tiny little fireflies and things like oh, the swarm is kind of scary. Grist is, you know, when we talk about things like why don't they do centaur planeswalkers? Grist is the ultimate like extension of that of going, no, this thing is sentient enough to have a spark, but it's like a fucking bug. Yeah. Like, oh god. But then the last thing they did that was Ren, and again we'll get to her in a little bit. But that was one of the more interesting planeswalkers yeah, we've I seen agree. in a really I long agree. time. And the problem, I guess, is the difference between sentience and can they talk can we actually communicate with them can we understand intention or is it just a force well can they you're right can they speak multiversal standard or whatever the fuck yeah. the language is you'd call it do, uh, do, can they, they, they form a hand and, and, and do clicks. yeah can, can they do like morse yeah, morse code can they hand write morse code know? oh it yeah. understands morse code um so yeah i think of all of them is quite cool sorin as much as i'm like yeah cool it's nice to see his beginnings i think the more interesting part of his um, bit in the story is, is a flavour pick we'll get to a little bit later oh, um, are we, are we going to talk to your Gengar oh we're going to talk to your Gengar oh we're going to talk to your Gengar, Gengar. alright then yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's one of my flavour picks and then obviously Tamiya it's nice to see her not being completed anymore obviously this is right at the beginning of her arc but it's nice that her latest card is her not being a robot mama well, or dead know, this, this is a broad thing that I think has dawned on me with this set and I know we we always used to this is a point we made before, we've always seen it in things like the pre concepts where they used like the lieutenant commander cards as the slot to put in like, you know, Tornos or like those kind of tertiary mm-hmm. characters and give them some flesh. And then they started doing more supplemental sets, and then they started going, Well, we have this really strong and I think this is one of the best things about having a strong, consistent story narrative. Whether you like it or not or its direction, it is there very predominantly, is that you can then go enough of the player base know that Tamiyo is a dead robot now. So if we do a new Tamiyo card, people aren't going to be like, but I thought Tamiyo was alive. Yeah. Why does she look so young now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. People are going to go, oh shit, Why cool. do we both just turn into Goofy? <laughs> no, no, no. But like, you know, oh cool, that's the thing here, or this, that, and the other. Or like, oh, Soren's a kid? That's kind of strange. Mm. Someone obviously this is before whatever. Catching a little bastard at the dinner table, not wanting to eat his potatoes. And there's so many of these cards, which I think they don't need to do the what-ifs anymore, because mm. they've kind of gone, well, the what-if is what if we saw it from a different perspective, not mm. just a different timeline? And the thing I love about these flipwalkers, I'm not going to dive too deep into each individual one, is that you get to see them, maybe more so than, say, like the original cycle of the Gatewatch characters, where they had more like action poses. But like Ral and Sorin specifically, but they all kind of have a bit of it, 
They are just they're just kids. Yeah, they're, they're just the teenagers doing what they need to do. In their manacles, you can tell they're really low they're really low drop kind of like just right at the beginning of their journeys. You can kind of see it, right? Like Raul's but Raul's just on the precipice of him turning into a life yeah. of crime. He's just like a listless teenager. None of teenager. them have power over one. No. Tamiya doesn't even have power. Sorin's like uh, someone trapped in his own sort of um, hierarchical like lineage of like being part of like a famous family. I feel like the implication that if one lava can be- have a spark, how many insects there are in the, in the multiverse? Oh, it's like a maths game. You know what I mean, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, that's insane. Uh, I do like Grissa. Again, it's quite funny that we we've been we said for ages like, oh, it's probably not we're probably not going to see any more. Um, about them for a while, and then they actually fulfil. There is this really nice back and forth. I feel that it's, it's like a three-year kind of thing of where you'll see the player base kind of go, can we get this thing? And then eventually we, we, we get the thing. And I know that Hasbro and WotC and all this, blah, 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 corporation, stop t- trying to take all of our money kind of thing. They, they do also try and give us things we like, because well, th- uh, it takes our money if they give us things we like, right? <laughs> I, I think on... In, <laughs> If pandering is the destination, along the way, there has to be some points where you go, oh, they did the thing. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, but very cool. I like that. I, I like I like all of them. It's nice to see some more flip walkers. I'll be excited to see another round of them again. Um, maybe with some that are a little bit more. Oh, shit. I didn't understand that because like, none of these are like mind blowing. None of these are like revelationary. You know? No, like none of these are, are, are crazy. Like and there's a lot of crazy cards in this set. Yeah, and I think it, it, maybe we, we get some other planeswalkers that like we see, like Kazmina before she was a planeswalker or something. Well, like we that. need to see Kazmina be a fucking planeswalker. Can we? First. Can we get? Um, can we get Tibble? But you see him as his human form, oh, and he does this torturous thing, and it turns him into the set. That you know, would you know that kind of thing. Sick. That would have been better than Raoul, in my opinion, just from a story implication point of view. But anyway, everyone loves Raoul. Good old Otter. Go on, go. What's your What's your first non group? Wait, no, do you have another group? Go, 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 throw Throw me some more flavor. <laughs> oh, uh, change the name to it. Just throw me some flavor. No, no, change the name of our podcast. No, it's just, I, I take it back immediately. Carry Jesus on. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, well, I guess a lot of my flavour picks are questions. <laughs> okay. Is that is that all right? Absolutely. Well, I that was also a question. There's, yeah, a, sure. there's very few of them which I'm like, this is a really good bit of flavour. Because there are lots of references, right? Let's just get that out of the way. Yeah, yeah, there are yeah. things that I don't know if you're going to talk about it. We never prep for these things now. But like White of the Reliquary is a direct reference to a thing. Necrodominus. Necrodominus is a direct reference Shadow to a thing. Shadow of the Second Sun. All of this, right? Yeah. That is one of my flavour picks. I'll come to that later. Oh, so, nice. So, yeah. Interesting. Okay. The one that I'm going to start with as a question is the card it's green and a blue instant planar genesis <laughs> yeah with art by uh liga schmil Skalne. oh i practiced it earlier sorry liga um out of nothing something was born so it's an instant that look at the top four cards of your library put a land from among them onto the battlefield tapped if you don't put a card from among them into your hand put the rest of the bottom of your library in random order so like yeah you're creating the, the in the metaverse of the game, you're creating the land on which you can start building the world thing. But planar genesis, and it is, is the implication you are. Li- this is the birth of a of a plane. It all looks so. Eldrazi are obviously the key theme in this. There's a lot of artifacts as well. And although this isn't an Eldrazi card, it is. If it's the planar genesis, we assume mm. that this is in the blind eternities. And if we can assume that this is in the blind eternities, the artwork shows a lot of tentacle writhing nonsense. It also potentially shows lots of pathways. Yeah. Is is this literally what we're seeing? I mean, they... it seems like a throwaway card. It's an uncommon. Yeah, and again, like even the line out of nothing, something was born, and it's generic. It's, it's vague enough that it's not being implicit. But I think, I think potentially, I mean, the only other way to read it is that it's a genesis from the play. The plane is producing something, right? But this doesn't look like that at all. So no, this this I think I think you're on the money. Mm. I think this is probably as direct they're going to tell us about that because it kind of. It puts a lot of things into question, you know. It's an it? instant. Like, it's not a saga. Yeah. It's not, like, an enchantment. Like, it's kind of wild, really. But, I mean, at the moment of birth would be an instant, right? Oh, fucking you're right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, it's, quite, it's, it's a good catch. That is, yeah, something that would definitely fly under the radar. But it's maybe it's something they come back to with loot. Um, understanding, you know, a different way of looking at the multiverse. Maybe you can see, like, where the, the beginnings of it were. Is, did they, is everything formed in a similar Big Bang fashion? Is there an expansion compression? Who knows? We're not going to get answers to these of things. Of course, Planar Genesis is a fucking... Simic card, as yeah, well. of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the true colors of magic. Yes, <laughs> in the beginning, there was blue and there was green, <laughs> yeah. and everyone had fun and always had lands and always had the counter spell available. <laughs> um, good, um, let's get some fucking law in hype in here. Oh, yeah, baby, yeah, baby. So, we've got two uh, direct, um, uh, th- not throwbacks, but references. We're getting two new swings, um, or, or what I like to call is two glow ups on, uh, on a couple of uh, legendaries that, um, 
I think one of them definitely needed the glow up, that being Rasheen. Uh, what was her name? Rasheen, Roaring Prophet. Mm. Um, it's really funny. I literally just took apart my Rasheen Hydra budget deck. She was, looks fucking sick in this. So I was like, this isn't doing enough. Um, I could change it into Grand Marnius, whatever the Tyranid human thing, the Tima deck. And I was like, I'm going to add some blue into it. It'll be more fun. And then they, they went and released exactly the card I needed for that deck to be more playable. So I might put it back together again, but it's good that she's got a glow up. And then the other one being Ashling. Um, she's back to being mono red, so this is pre. Well, we don't know because we are going to Lawman again next year, um, and we don't know if this is now maybe her currently now that the aurora has been fixed, or was this her in Lawin before the aurora happened turned it to Shadowmore before all of the resolution of that arc. Mm. Don't know. I'm assuming this is her now. I'm assuming everything's okay, and she, she, as much as she burnt a lot of shit to the ground and was big naughty naughty, being the extinguisher, hoping she's now. Hey, you know, I'm, I'm fine now. Everything, you know, phoenixes and stuff. Everything rises from the ashes, right? <laughs> Everything's okay. Um, much better card, not just single single use. Put 99 mountains in your deck and have a fun troll the, game. The elemental Afrites of Lorwyn and Shadowmoor just looks so Afrites gorgeous or as well. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> Are we going to do that this episode? <laughs> I think many people have already spoken about the sort of the, the Afrite Jin thing. I think the Vorthos cards did as well. Mm. Um, Afrites are a kind of gin or is it the other way around you're talking to the wrong person <laughs> i know we we're a law, law, law cast but i have it I, all i know is that they're not going to be printing a free any, they're not gonna be printing gins anymore but they're not gonna errata any of the past ones to be back well to no being it again. i think that must be it's a bit like the snake naga thing then mm. like naga are snake folk yeah so maybe gin are a freaks of a certain degree do you know what i mean because i mean technically ashling's creature type is elemental yeah so that makes sense yeah yeah I just think that they're gorgeous as well. Just the whole, the whole look. Is I, I love, I love the flamekin. I think, I think Lauren in general. I mean, I there's no secret. It was one of the first sets that I properly opened. Absolutely fell in love with the art style. I think the whole thing is gorgeous. It's Eldraine turned up to the nines. Um, I, I, I'm so excited to do it going back. I hope that it does the Kamigawa thing and actually lives up to expectations. Um, but yeah, nice to know that they're just going here. Here's some extra legendaries because we might not have space for them in next year's set, and I don't want you to be angry about it. So here they are. If you like the Rasheen artwork on Roaring Profit, by the way, that's by Fang Zin Yu, who's previously only done some stuff for Doctor Who. So it's oh, a, wow, a nice. very new magic artist. Nice. <laughs> nice. Right, your turn. Throw me some flavour. Okie pokey. Who have I got up next on the dog? You can't... Sorry, you can't keep doing that. Yeah, I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> you can't stop me. Uh, all right. Let's talk about... Uh, let's talk about two cards in one. They are the Eldrazi cards I mentioned. Technically, one is Eldrazi, the other is not Eldrazi, but they're Eldrazi related. Uh-huh. Corrupted Shapeshifter. Oh, God, I'm glad you brought this up. What the fuck? Which is an Eldrazi Shapeshifter. Yeah. Uh, by Ralph Horsley, which is pretty cool. Uh, three and a blue. Void. As Corrupted Shapeshifter enters the battlefield, it becomes your choice of a 3 3 creature with flying, a 2 5 creature with vigilance, or a 0 12 <laughs> creature with defender. Yep. Flavor text reads, within its body, three linea- lineages ward for supremacy. And you see this human-headed shapeshifter with one half of their body is Ulmog. The other one is uh, Kozilek with a bunch of Kozilek, uh, like, monoliths flapping Obsidian around. Obsidian stuff, yeah. You've got some wings on it, which I don't, which I think, I guess, are ulmog I think wings aren't technically any of them because yeah. they're supposed to float, but it's the, then, t- it's the tentacleness at the bottom that well, feels very ulmog It's Ulmog-y tentacles, but, like, you could... You can tell there's lots of emerald eyes all over them. Yeah, as well. yeah, emerald eyes. Yeah, and it's exactly. just the, the idea. I mean, obviously, this is, this card is actually very clean. My my one criticism for those wise, or I suppose Mel Mel uh, wise in this set, is that a lot of the artwork and the references are very clever. But actually, I don't think a lot of the stuff the cards do because and because this is a set ostensibly being printed into a very functional format. As much as everything is Commander Masters these days, it's not a Commander set, so they don't have to make things like super niche They do have to have things be a bit more functional. Yeah. So the the room for like, well, this is a goblin with a hat, and he does things that goblins with hats would do. Do you know what I mean? Like, so I don't think the set is that all on fire with it. However, this one is very clean, where it's coming in with lots of different abilities, relating to the different Eldrazi. Yeah. Styles. The idea that they battle for supremacy yeah. is an interesting flavor point because you, I think, the idea that we have is that they work in in sync, like in. Um, concurrent synchronicity, right? Of where Ulamog comes and destroys everything. Kozilek morphs it into a into into 
into pliable putty for Emrakul to then reimagine into something mm. functional, you know? And I guess that idea that all three of them are tackling this thing at the same time might uh, may be the understanding of not all three Titans should be in the same place at the same time. Or like, or like this, by virtue of this person being a shapeshifter, is that they've been corrupted by one. They've tried to control it with their shapeshifting. So like the next one comes on and goes, oh, oh right, yes, yeah, cool, so this yeah. one's ready to go. Well, do you think it was able to be... See, see that's the thing. Was this guy a shapeshifter first and then because of that they've taken on each form or is it only a shapeshifter because each each lineage is trying to force it into a different form? Oh, interesting. Form? I took it in being that by virtue of the per- fact that they have this ability, they've able to take on aspects yeah. of all Because I guess the idea is that if you take away the Eldrazi, it's still a shapeshifter, right? Yeah. But maybe it's only a shapeshifter because of the Eldrazi. But just, just a terrifying prospect. Yeah, no, it look, and it, the artwork is terrifying. They Ralph Wolseley's like done a great pain. job. Yeah, like, and what if the you, fuck? If you pair this one up with the uh, Ben Hill artwork for Path of Annihilation, which is the three and a green enchantment with Devoid, uh, and Eldrazi mm. control have tapped one of one manner of any colour, which is pretty wild considering it's all Devoid shit. It creates Eldrazi, they can tap for mana as well, and whenever you cast a creature spell with mana seven or greater, you gain four life. So it's an enchantment that's just full on Eldrazi sort of, you know, synergy. But the artwork here shows what looks like some sort of like like world tree or like tear in the fabric of the multiverse like they're playing with that idea of it but there's three pathways leading up to this tree this kind of like made of light and one of it is all the bismuth that Kozilek creates the other one's all the chalk dust that Udamod creates and the other one's all the tentacles, tentacles. That <laughs> you definitely don't mind. take the path of tentacles do you yeah <laughs> <laughs> which path do you choose pretty path chalky path or the wriggly one yeah. <laughs> absolutely the not one the one that's going to go up your fucking eyeballs like yeah <laughs> and I, it's just although this one's a much less direct sort of like you know combat between the different Eldrazi Titans mm. it kind of it's a really nice like this is the kind of thing that if they never if they never did any marketing for a new set coming up that like all oh, this is what they would, like imagine if Shadows Over in Strad was redone today mm. and they didn't have any lead up that Emrakul was going to be in the moon and then you just got a box art on a bundle which was this mm. people would lose their fucking mind mm. like it's that kind of like it's like a film poster for Eldrazi I yeah. love it I guess it's it's one of those things that because we kind of ruined Eldrazi the second time we went back to Zendikar anyway, and now they're all gone. Mm. And then because obviously we trapped away Emrakul, I guess the idea is that if you wanted to do more Eldrazi stuff without it taking over another plane, it's like the only way to do it was go, okay, let's just have another look at what they did already. Mm. And then it feels like this is them making up things. They don't have to tie it to werewolves in Innistrad. They don't have to, te- to um, they don't have to like make all of these. They don't have to downplay the Eldrazi's strength to make it match up with the allies because allies are fucking, you know, really weak, um, like human kind of things. You have to balance. Like, it's it's like the reason why Rise of Eldrazi was a separate set from Zendikar and Wellwake and drafted separately is because you couldn't really balance these one drops that had landfall that really wanted to be getting ag- ag- aggro in with a nine drop 7-11, you know? So yeah, it's yeah. quite nice that we now get to go back and see them do another interpretation of that original kind of like, this is the weirdness, the strangest of the Eldrazi and it kind of really lands. Um, and I go, going into this set, I originally thought from from a a playing commander point of view, I was very much like, "Cool, I want all of the lands, all of the flip lands, the MDFCs, because of course they were literally made for for, for, for commander players." But energy don't have an energy deck. Eldrazi don't really have a colorless deck or a devoid deck. So two thirds of this of the set, I'm kind of like, "Whatever, don't really need, don't really care about." But from a flavor point of view, mechanical point of view, they actually are really really cool. Yeah. That's really cool. I do think now, since I mentioned it, I do think that there is a little bit of a, a conceit that they did just go, "Hey, can we reprint a bunch of reserve list cards, but put energy on them and make them energy related, so it's, <laughs> so it's actually okay now?" You know, I feel like that was pushed. I feel that was a little bit too on the nose. There's a few different cards. That I'm like, I mean, I've always wanted to play recurring nightmare in Commander, so thank you for making a version of it that I can play. Do we think that there's two ways that that design space comes from? It's either look we really don't want to piss off all these people so we can do it but let's be nice about it or do you think it's the other way where people go I know I can't reprint that fucking card so I'm just going to put this little symbol on it so fuck you and I think it's also a nice way for energy decks to then have like these really powerful effects to play with but there is still no five colour energy push and again this isn't a commander set I get it but it does feel like, you know, that there were one too many cards. So I was like, oh, that's just that card, but with energy instead. Mm. Like the Allurin version, for example, I think is significantly less interesting than, say, uh, the the Nightmare card. Like the Cath- Cathonian um, Nightmare or whatever it is. Um, that's just like a little aside. Just don't just put slap energy on things and think it's okay. <laughs> um, shall we talk some Shilganga? Insert obligatory Pokemon joke. Here. Yeah, I mean, yeah, right. But so, so, so each of the... I don't know if each of them did because Gris doesn't have a legendary assigned to it that I can tell. I think that's where the space for an, another legendary I'll talk about in a moment comes from. Um, and I don't think Ajani got one either, but 
Tamiyo got Genku, Sorin gets Shulgengar, um, and mm. essentially it is the demon that originally created the vampiric curse thing stuff that yeah. started off this whole, this whole, this whole, this whole bullshit nonsense on Innistrad. It was Shulgengar's doing in the, in, in, in the first place. So it's from the story from 2000, uh, Magic 2015, that was actually published in 2014 by Colin Kawakami. Um, which was one of the yeah Magic 2015 stories set on Innistrad, and it's a, it's like one paragraph. I read it the other day, where it's it's a set, story set on Innistrad, bloody like that, and it's from the it's the oh the Luma, the Lunark's journal is the story. So it's from the point of view of this Lunark talking about you know the battle between good and evil, bloody bloody blah, and it's one throwaway line uh, about talking about how Shulgengar created the famine and tricked Edgar Markov into like doing what they needed to do. So Shulgengar is the one who create who was didn't create the famine, but is like responsible for pushing the famine that drove the humans of Steinzia into a desperate situation that then caused Edgar Markov to try and find a solution. Edgar Markov being a very famous um, alchemist mm. and well respected, the Markov family were fucking rich as shit. And then he turns to Shulgengar, who appears in a very demon way and goes, I've got a way that you can keep your people safe forever. I can exsanguinate angel's blood, which gives you immortal properties. So he creates the famine and then tells this alchemist, well, if you do this thing, you get to beat the Pushed him to the brink and then yeah. offer him the deal to get out of it. Yeah. And Sorin, the Sorin's whole story, the reason he looks like a moody little shitbag in his cards, is because he, Sorin didn't want to take the angel's no. blood. This is the this is the biggest tragedy of our little goth boy Sorin. So he never wanted to be little goth boy Sorin. He wanted to be just a kid. And his granddad was like, drink this angel blood boy. Yeah, tough. Yeah. <laughs> tough. Which is why they had such a fractious relationship yes. in um, Midnight Vow. Um, Midnight Vow? Crimson Vow. Crimson Vow. Midnight Hunt. Yeah, yeah. there we go. Cool. Midnight Vow. Crim- yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so... Um, it's also dank as fuck because he's literally sat on a throne of angel wings. Yeah, um, he's super cool. So cool. It's a really cool deck as well. It's nice that they're finally doing like a proper black white angel commander because as much as he's a demon, it's all about sacrificing angels and then bringing them back from the graveyards. They love gives... a black white angel, don't they? They've got that R- Rudolph. Rudolph. R- Rudolph. Rudolph the Duskbringer. So there's Which, a couple of of angels as well. Yeah, exactly. Around. Yeah, well, what was the what's the what, the bald bald chick? What's her name? Uh, Deathless. That's Deathless Angel. Uh, angel of fuck. Can't remember. Not Angel of Fuck. That's a whole different it's, thing. I mean, being the order. Angel of Despair. Yeah, there we but go. then you also have Death Pact Angel, and you also have uh, Angel of the Scales. Oh, it was my pre-release card for guilds. I know Magister of Worth is one as well. Another black white angel. That is another black white angel. Listing black white angels at this point. Oh, they're great. Yeah, <laughs> <There's> <laughs> it's not, very there's cool. There's not a bad one. They're all yeah. great. They all slap. It is very cool. Uh, since we were talking about uh, Shulgengar, I kind of mentioned him already. Genku is also in the set. Uh, this being um, Tamio's husband. Um, the main thing to talk about this is the fact that um, whenever another non-token permanent leaves the battlefield under your control, it w- w- doesn't really matter about that, but he makes tokens, little tokens of foxes, moonfolk, or rats. And the, the fox token is just the cutest little Can we talk thing about the tokens? I didn't think you were going to talk about the tokens. There are so many tokens in this set. It's insane. There's like I've, 50 I've of saved them. the page. The tokens in this set are fucking rad. Yeah. We've got a new clue token, which is one of Tamio's scrolls. We've got, um, for a card that looks like another card, there's like sp- Spawn of the Worm Coil, or whatever the card is called. Worm Coil Lava. Thank you. Yeah. It doesn't actually create the same tokens that a Worm Coil no. Engine creates, but it creates a 2-1 and a 1-2 Lifelink Death Touch Worm. And so you could, if you, you know, own a Sharpie, uh, take these tokens, <laughs> because the Worm Coil Engine tokens are fucking hard to find. I've, I've got two of the Lifelink ones, I don't have any of the Death Touch ones. I, no, I, the other way around, I have two of the Death Touch ones and not a Lifelink I one. took, like, art proxies yeah, of, of it's, them. It's what most people end up doing. Yeah, like, there's the rat token, you're right, is this little rat and a geek. So cute. Little samurai geek. Obviously, this is Nash, one of Nashi's brothers. Yeah. Um, and then you have the fox, which is just, look at the little guy. Look at his little face. Art by Chuck Lukacs. Yeah. Absolutely delightful. And obviously this is his adopted children, you know. Like, even the moon folk's quite cute. Um, definitely the least cute of the three of them. But this is the children, the adopted children, which is quite cute. And then obviously for mana, he can then make them bigger. It's, this is him nurturing them. It's really cute. It's nice There's to a see. little samurai insect token as well. Is there? Have you seen this guy? Oh, no, it's the... Um, isn't that the... Oh, that's so cool. Ooh. I'm now showing Nathan oh my God, the like uh, Madeline Boney <laughs> in Sick Mantis. Oh, that's the one that the Nantuko thing makes. Yeah. Okay, yeah, sick. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That... There's also a new Moonfolk token. There's so many tokens yeah, in this so set. It's a really They're nice really set of tokens. Well. Yeah. And obviously we've got another printing of Orpheomancer, so more opportunities to get that 1-1 one, one Death Touch Snake. Um, yeah, very cool. Genku, big fan. Um, 
Um, have you got any other legendaries you want to talk about? Any people that are in the set? One more, expect? one more, cool. one more. It is, uh, in terms of legendaries, it is the legendary dragon, which is... Oh, I've lost Oh, the Null Kite. Yeah, what's their name? <sighs> Heragast, Erupting Null Kite. Yes, thank you very much. I've lost the page. So Heragast, Erupting Null Kite is dragon. But this, talking about timelines and where they're all jumping around in X, Y, and Z, this is clearly post Shadows over Innistrad. Because it's a dragon that's been corrupted by Emrakul's influence. Like and you can many... tell it's a Moonveil one because it's yeah. a very, very lift-looking, yeah. semi-transparent wing thing. And yet again, I take every opportunity to remind Magic the Gathering players, Innistrad has fucking dragons, remember? Yeah. Like, literally, not... literally only, th- I think, three. Uh, there's a few. There's a few. Cause there's that, a... that would be three. <laughs> <laughs> well, they've got a lot of drakes, which seems to make a little bit of sense because drakes are kind drakes of horrible. Drakes are fine. Well, there was... Did they have moon drakes? The, well, they've like stitched Drake, and there's a couple. Yeah, there is like a Moon Silver yeah. Drake and stuff. So, and that in my mind, for whatever reason, you take away the front legs, and I'm like, yeah, that's kind of like horror trophy. I don't know why, because they're more like lizard like, I guess. I mean, would you expect in most most situations, if you have one, it's like, yeah, but evolution probably would have allowed them to have both. I just think for a set that had so many iconic creatures, you didn't need to go. Oh, also dragons, dragon yeah. also like yeah, it doesn't need it. But also dragons are really strong against undead because it's flames they kill flame most fire. things. Yeah, <laughs> but the dragons on Innistrad for the most part because it's actually I think this is an art direction problem, not an actual law problem. I think the art some art direction got slept, left under the radar. But for the most part, they're moon so these moon sort of dragons which have these kind of very sort of like thin. Uh, rainbowy iridescent, sort of iridescent kind of, wings yeah. and they kind of glide around and they've got these long sort of Germanic dragon snouts they're fucking rad as shit they do fit the Germanic setting they yeah. just don't necessarily fit the horror setting and this being having the influence of Emrakul it just it adds this whole new spin of taking something that was quite a beautiful creature on a plane where beauty is very hard to come by mm. and fucking ruining it with tentacles <laughs> twisting it yeah um, and I just thought I, I love the idea it fit there's something about seeing a, le- a creature or a character that has a corrupted influence where, and again, this is the kind of very clever thing about playing with timelines and looking back at different perspectives, where we never met this character before. They didn't have a card before. But I feel upset for them because I know through other contexts that they weren't always like that mm. and something has happened to them. It's like seeing a fractionized character going... Fuck, dude, you must be really fucked up. Like, yeah. not Elish Norn, but like the human characters. Yeah, the ones that have been turned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I guess. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those things about you've taken something pretty and you've you've you know, you've ruined it. Ruined it. Also, this card is fucking bonkers. Mm-hmm. You build this deck right, and it is insane. Um, very cool concept. Very very much like it. Um, quickly, my last legendary that I want to talk about. There's another one that I think I'm just going to talk about when we eventually get to the fourth of it. Um, if you know what I'm referring to, well done. You know your law. Um. Six, a name oh, that yeah. normally wouldn't be an acceptable <laughs> name for a legendary <laughs> character. You're like, you can't just call a fucking character Six and be okay with it. But because we've already had Ren and Six together, there wouldn't be anything other. What would have been interesting if it had been like, had you given it th- the name that it would have referred to itself as, which I guess it's a tree, so it probably wouldn't have. <laughs> but then underneath that, you could have had that little thing, you know, where they put like the secondary name and then, then put the name Six on it. Anyway, whatever. Um, I like the fact that we see it separately. We see it doing its own thing. Maybe this is... Is this before or after Ren left it? It kind of looks like it's after because there's almost like a Ren-like kind of space of where mm-hmm. Ren used to be in it. And this is just Six going on its merry way being happy back at home again. I quite like that. Interesting. I don't normally care about tree folk, but I like them more without faces than with faces. <laughs> I I wrote a note for this card. I'm glad you like it. The note I wrote was, what a waste of a card slot. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm also I'm also definitely like being won over the fact that it slots so well into a deck I've built oh, recently. Oh, there we go. The reason, I, the reason I'm not a fan is because for the best one in the world, I know we like our Ubu, and I know we like, oh, it's not a cute thing, and a friend, and they're just a little friend. I know that voice is creeping into magic in a big way, and yeah. I'm not always grumpy about it. Sometimes I make that voice. <laughs> the thing that we liked about Ren and Six was this idea that this dryad drove around a tree mech. Yeah. And when we had Ren and Seven, we weren't like, but what happened to Six? We were like, cool, Ren and Seven, new tree mech, let's fucking mm. go. Ren died saving the multiverse with Ren and the World Tree, right? Whatever. Seven, I believe, yeah, got burnt. I believe, yeah, I think so, because otherwise, why did she separate? Because I, I don't think she, she, she couldn't have left whatever plane she left Seven behind on without without a plane, without it to plane to walk with. I don't want... Who's playing this as a lore fan? As their 
Like that's that's what I kind of have to pull back from. Mm. What story and what lore does this character have? Shulgengar is like only had a line and a story, but the context of Shulgengar is like he's a fucking demon that yeah. destroys angels. I guess if the if the green if the green flipwalker had been Ren instead of Grist, then this would have been more justified, mm-hmm. right? But I guess the problem is because Grist didn't have. A, a, like a, a legendary creature. I mean, I'm not saying that each one of them needed. There wasn't like a slot to fill, right? Because yeah. Genku took up a multicolored slot instead of a, mo- yes. a monocolored slot. I just think it's it's an interest. I don't know what. Yeah, I don't know who turned around and went. Oh, we should do this character. But I don't think this has been done badly. I think it has another enough, throwback yeah, yeah. to that when Ren, like Ren, clearly had fire abilities, and then it shows that all of the abilities she had for retracing and bringing things back from the graveyard that wasn't her. That was six because mm. these are on six's abilities. So Ren by herself is actually probably quite weak. And it's only because she's attached to this tree folk that has these abilities that she becomes quite strong. Mm. And actually, now I think about it, Ren and Six as a card is actually quite different to Ren and Seven because the thing that she's like in the the the, the, the mech suit that she's in has actually different different abilities, which I've only just really thought about. Two more legendaries, just one word. Sort yeah, of yeah, things. yeah. Uh, we have Flage. Thank you. Is the one I was going to say that we, we we're not going to get the fourth one. There is a fourth one out there. The fourth one being called. <laughs> I think I've deleted the page. Shit. How did I do that? Oh, I'm such an idiot. Oh, no, there it is. <gasps> the fourth one being Scotha, mm. Titan of Eternal Dark. Why wouldn't... Why, so, okay, so let's... The Flage Titan of Fury's Fire yes. is the white red coloured Titan from Theros. Yeah. Not the gods, the Titans. Lightning Helix on a 6-6. Six, six. Yeah, so... And great art as well by Lucas Graciano. Phenomenal artwork. Phenomenal yeah. artwork. So this goes along with Uro and... Uh, Uro? Uh, oh, that's oh, no, not Oko. Uro, yeah, yeah, you, you are Yeah, Uro, yeah, and, Uro then... and um, Croxa. Croxa, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. I think we can get the other Titan. There's many a supplemental set. I think the main reason they didn't do it recently is because the ancient one was also. Uh, uh, this is massive conjecture, but I believe it's probably going to be blue black because it's called the Eternal Dark. Mm. It's probably not going to be one of color because none of the others are. And we just recently had a massively undercosted. Low drop Dimir legend in the ancient one being a two drop eight eight. The ancient one being one of the gods from, from well, what we assume is the god that was supplanted by Aklazots, Ak- 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 yeah, uh, because it's the ancient one and it seems to have the same kind of ability. God, do you know all that shit I was saying earlier about us not knowing our shit? And we like, do know our shit. We, we, <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> we've got binders full of oh, yeah. posting oh, yeah. Um And then the last sort of legendary, just want to touch on before we move on to non legendaries. And this is more for you, my friend. Hmm. Uh, Brea is a reprint. Right, new artwork, Gaga, very Lady Gaga, it's very Lady Gaga. Yeah, what do you think? I you think used to, you used to play a, a Brea deck. And yeah, Brea so... was your Bay, as you used to Bra- say. Bayer, yeah. I mean, Bay, Bay, it was Bayer combo queen because it literally. I, I mean, I've now taken an entire color out of the deck, and it's still just a multifaceted combo deck. Run yeah. by Silas and Rebecca. But yeah, fuck you. Um, it was also a way to split up having all of my shocks and fetches and everything in one deck. I think I like seeing a different side of her. I like seeing her not just being... I, I think they also kind of had to go back because maybe there was like a body positivity thing of she was literally just a torso mm. or like the big very top of her of, of, of her torso. Then she was missing most of her abdomen. And I feel like they kind of went, should we just make her look a little bit less weird? Just give her more of a normal looking well, artwork? Well, there must, there must be something said about any any set which has artifice as its like main drive through. Magic hasn't always had the best track record in art direction. Like look, you look think at it, fucking Hero of Blade Holes. That's exactly what yeah. I'm thinking of. The, the especially the, the the pre-release promo artwork of it, and you can clearly tell that she's like it's like concave where yeah. her stomach should be. It's like, come on, guys. So I think I think maybe there is a redressing the balance. Also, Brea, this has just occurred to me. This could be complete bullshit. Brea is quite a popular um, character for a lot of cosplayers, and I wonder if some maybe some art directors have seen the cosplay that they're coming out with that where they try and achieve this artifice effect or do something which is a lot of the time cosplayers will do things where it's like this character if they were in beachwear or yeah. whatever. And I think the thing is the they've changed it now to something that's way more achievable to look realistically, but it's going to be way more work because it's super intricate. <laughs> so good luck, cosplayers. Mm. Uh, my so that's yeah. I'm, I'm now onto onto non legendary cards. I only really have one soup one that I really really want to talk about, and that's charitable levy. Okay. Um, I'm a big fan of of white card advantage effects that do things that feel very white. Um, and not not just I mean, and that's and that's not to say anything bad against like the recent sorceries. Like every other player draws a card and you draw three, or you and target player both draw three cards. Those are fine. That's a nice negotiate negotiative. But this feels like this is, hits the nail on the head way better. 
One and a white for an enchantment. Non-creature spells cost one more to cast. It's Thalia ability. Whenever a player casts a non-creature spell, put a collection counter on Charitable Levy, and then if there are three or more collection counters on it, you sacrifice it. When you do, draw a card, and you may search your library for a planes card, not a basic planes card, and put it onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. The idea being that tax effects don't normally... You don't normally see where that money goes. Here, you get to see where the money goes. Mm. And then because it's because that then pays back to you, it's essentially the idea that it's charity. You go, please pay to me. I really need the help. Please pay the taxes. And then you see the benefit of the taxes. Mm. Now, that's that's really nice. Now, this is a tax effect that doesn't feel like a douchey move. And it doesn't feel like they've put charitable levy on it to be, like, cute. Like, land tax, you know, or something like that. It doesn't feel like it's going, oh, ho, 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 taking advantage of the people. It's like, no, no, no. This is the way to stop the greedy players. Mm. Get the rich folks. Get them to pay their taxes. And then you, the lowly white player, you can benefit from it. Mm. That's great. Put it in a deck where you can recursively play it. Oh, we're talking value, boys. Yes. And it affects you as well. It's not just your opponents. It also affects you. You're, it's fair, good, honest. White. This is where white card advantage should be coming in. And I like the fact that it does both the land and the card. It doesn't put the land into your hands. Like, I feel like a lot of white trying to get it there effects just aren't good enough. Like, I play a lot of random effects with goes get a planes card, put it into your hand. I'm like, that's just not strong enough anymore. <laughs> Absolutely put it into play. Let's catch up. Let's do a little bit of taxation. And again, people don't have to play it. You know, they can play creatures if they want to. But yeah, really cool card. Sorry, I chose, Sorry, ex- I chose I exactly the time to you to slurp. Yeah. We're, we're back on the wines. Um, Yay! Wait, wait, today is a lovely uh, Cabernet Sauvignon 2022 <laughs> Product of France. Product of France. Louis de Camponach. And we should probably finish this first bottle. Wait, one, sorry. I mean, we're going to have a little... Yeah, top up. (laughs) We're double recording today. We're batch recording. Yeah, Um, back to back. We're bagging them. Um, Good. Ahead of... Stop. Magic on items now. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Oh, yeah, true that. I have so many cars to talk about. But I think... So I'm going to talk... I'm going to ask... I'm going to ask the questions. Yes. (laughs) The ones that are cool are cool. It's like Cyclops, Superconductor, cool. Another is it Cyclops? They're fucking rad as shit. Yeah, something that's really underplayed. Like we, I wish, I wish Melek had been a Cyclops instead of a Weird. As much as Weirds are cool, the Cyclops, is a cool. Cyclops would be really cool. Yeah. You have Kaladesh, the the new Kaladeshi Dragon Tiger Cat Dragon. Yeah. Which is, but here's my question. But he looks very much like the one from Ikoria, right? Well, Thriving Skycrawler, it's called. The interesting thing here is that the. The dragons on Tarkir, which all have this kind of again dragons, dragons on Tarkir, all have this tiger aesthetic. Wait, is this is this not? Wait, this is Kaladesh. Yeah, it's Kaladesh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, the sky ships, the sky ships three, sure, right? right? Sorry, yeah. But it's a cat dragon now, whereas all the dragons on Kaladesh originally were just dragons. Just dragons. They yeah. Have this very, this feels like this feels. It take away the sky ship, I'd have thought Akoria. Obviously, energy. Well, put the sky ship in, you would have thought Akoria because Akoria has sky ships. But not the ether. Uh, I guess yeah, actually, it's a good point. See, that's a crossover that would work quite well, I think. What if like what if Kaladesh brought their tech to in Akoria? Yeah. And like the humans triumphed over the monsters. And we'll talk about that. A little bit later, but for you <laughs> viewers, that might be a little while later, longer than that, because it's yeah, going to be an Arabia scale episode. Hall. If you're listening to this episode a week behind when we recorded it, you probably another episode in between. Yeah. Um, so there's that. Um, new Pete Venter's artwork with Warren Soul Trader. Oh, Warren Soul, yes. Pete Venter's artwork, amazing. Zob- zombie Goblin Wizard. <laughs> zombie Goblin Wizard. Someone said the other day they were research and they were looking at uh, doing reviews for it, and they said um, two uh, relevant creature types. I'm like, excuse me, Wizard is relevant. All three of those creature types are. Dank. If you're making a wizard deck, like an Anala deck, you put this yeah. in there. Uh, do, are you playing Magic the Gathering? Because I'm pretty sure zombies, goblins, and wizards are Magic the Gathering. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know. like this is such a good card. I managed to nab a copy, a copy recently because I, I figure we're uh, we're at the point now of where this is as cheap as cards are going to get before people start paying. Like, before people realize that they're, they're really strong and they're going to be in a lot of decks. There are a lot of. We're not talking about power level at all, but there are a lot of really strong cards in this in this set. It's very very viable. You, I, I opened exactly one pack um, of. Modern Horizons three. The rare was a fetch land, and out of the pack, two two of the card, two of them were cards that I could have put into decks immediately. Mm. So, I mean, the power level I think is is incredible. And I've got two cards that I want to ask questions about, and then yes. one art of the set. You all right with that? Yes, I've got some questions for you as well. Actually, to be fair. All right, my <laughs> first question. We'll ping pong questions. Sage of the Unknowable, one and a blue human wizard zero four. Tap to add a colorless, specifically a colorless. Spend this mana only to cast colorless spells or to activate the ability. So in a set with a bunch of Eldrazi, makes mechanical sense and mm-hmm. probably a bit of thematic sense. Sage of the Unknowable, all right? Eldrazi are unknowable. Yeah. The flavor text reads... Or activating ability, I guess, because it's not quite so explicit. Yeah. Because you don't know what someone's inner abilities are. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someday, we will walk the blind eternities and see the truths that lie beyond the stifling veil of reality. Now, this is a regular human. They're not a planeswalker. They're a wizard. Fine, they're not a regular human, but they're a wizard. They know about the blind eternities. Mm. They're talking about veils of reality, and mm. they're talking about walking the blind eternities, and they give power to cast Eldrazi and shit. But the artwork by Josie Hernandez is doesn't really read as Eldrazi e to me. It definitely reads as Zendikar. The issue I find now is that this is clearly pre-Omen Path, right? Mm-hmm. But this is almost like written with post-Omen Path knowledge. Well, because Zendikar wasn't one of those planes of where yes, okay, a bunch of random planeswalkers popped in to try and save the day, but. I don't know. None of us have been in a war, but I think it's pr- I think it's pretty easy to say that most of the plane isn't going to notice when a bunch of planeswalkers blip to the front of a fucking battle. Yeah, fight some Eldrazi and fuck off again. The stories might be told, but they still don't know where they came from or whether or not the blind eternities are a big thing, right? I wonder if unless Gideon spread the word of other planes will come <laughs> and help us. True. The the Eldrazi were always kind of this cosmic horror trope, and especially when it came to like Shadows over in Estrad, and. The fact that this wizard is stood on the precipice of the sea, mm. which in itself is a very, like, because it's all set in, um, oh god, I'm going to show my whole ass. It's all set in New England, like a lot of these original, like, Lovecraftian stories. Uh, Lovecraft was a cunt, just to throw that in there, as we all know. Um, I just, a lot of this, a lot of the tropes around the artwork and, the, like, what it's saying makes it seem like this is someone who is a cleric of oh, the uh, Eldrazi. It's almost like Ailey, right? Of where, like, an eternal pilgrim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But she's, just, it doesn't it's a much lift softer, it down. Yeah, and it's a much softer mm. look as well. I don't know. I'd love to talk to Lucas Graciano and, like... Yeah, I also don't think the garb, the garb doesn't look Zendikari immediately to me. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm not the best person to say, like, what different um, fashion styles are on each plane. But that headpiece, for example, doesn't reflect... Zendikar to me immediately but again maybe I'm wrong maybe again there are different sects I mean Lawhold was a was a point of exceptional knowledge right I remember Jace being super fucking upset when it got trashed he was like that was such a point mm. of, of, of of knowledge because a lot of planeswalkers used to come by Zendikar I also thinking about it more and more Zendikar was known to be a planeswalker haven right because of its ridiculously um, crazy manner mm-hmm. so maybe it was a plane that was more aware of other planes being there and also when these fucking random eldritch horrors literally form the sky I think at that point you probably figure out you're not alone in the multiverse well I mean like Strixhaven knew didn't it yeah but Strixhaven I guess was another confluence again maybe we get instead of getting a Rabia scale we'll maybe next time get a awareness of the rest of the multiverse scale but again post Omen Path most planes know about other planes now. <laughs> Mo- Moag's just like, we're just chilling here with yeah. some goats. And Wait, there, there, there's some paths and Eldrazi <laughs> going on? Okay, there whatever. was a guy with a goatee and white hair that came through a while ago. I think his name was uh, Irvin. I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, okay, so I've got some question marks. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's literally just five question marks in a row and then some cards underneath it because what the fuck is going on? Signature Slam. Um, two and a green, uncommon instant, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control, then each modified creature you control deals it's a fight card, whatever, fucking whatever, who cares. <laughs> Flavor text A lone dinosaur in gorilla territory doesn't stand a chance. Now if that doesn't sound weird enough, the artwork is quite literally one gorilla with no armor, leg locking a, 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 a what looks like a mini T Rex, while another gorilla in armor yeah. is is performing an elbow drop on it. Yeah. What the fuck is happening? That armoured gorilla, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken... What the fuck is happening, Andy? That armoured gorilla is a reference to another card. Slaying Mantis? No, Slaying Mantis is the... Maybe the same reference to another card? Oh my gosh, what is it? I'm going to have to look it up now. I know, yeah. Do you know what? I think they actually mentioned this in another podcast. I listened Did to they? Well. Okay. That, that but artwork is a, is a reference to another card art. Fine, that makes it acceptable. It's just why is one of them in armor and the other one not in armor? Yeah. What planes do we know of that have dinosaurs and giant gorillas? Apart from this, quite clearly also being a little bit like in that moment in Kong in in Kong Skull Island where there's multiple <laughs> T Rexes fighting one gorilla. This is now multiple gorillas fighting one T Rex. Maybe that's also a, 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 I don't know, but it just, I looked at it and I was like, the more I look at it, the more I'm like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> what the fuck is happening? Where are we? Justify It's all the cliff tops. It's a cliff side as well. It's not in the middle well, of a jungle. There's no jungle around. Jungle is where both dinosaurs and gorillas would live. I still don't understand. There's I have so many questions. Magic Magic recently has had a bit of a memification. We've sort of spoken about it before. And I... I think this set has a good balance because it has the in jokes which work because they are in jokes with a bit the magic time community. spirally, right? Yeah, which yeah. and I've said that always has worked because they're jokes for magic people. They're not just like meme culture jokes. And this signature slam, I think, 
is the balance of sometimes it is nice to have a silly card in the set and this is the silly card in the yeah. set. It doesn't you know I mean? annoy me. It just I just have an infinite questions. <laughs> I think it's hilarious. Right. Uh, Give me another question. Uh, well, I think those have, were have my you questions. run out of questions. Okay, I've got I've got two very quick questions. Okay, go for it. One of which, how many wombats do you think have been printed in Magic Ma- Andy Man? Uh, three. You're correct. Oh, what, what are they? Uh, That's a much harder question. Uh, yeah, I don't know. You've got Doctor Surgeon General, right? Who is a I've deleted the tab, but he's like a wombat dinosaur monkey or something stupid because it was the one that did the the, the fusing mm-hmm. before fusing was a mm-hmm. thing in, in Unstable. The other one is Rabid Wombat. Wombat. If you want, really want, if you want to, we don't make magic art like that anymore. Go and look up Rabid Wombat because it's mental. And then in this set, we have a Nightmare Wombat. Um, I genuinely thought it was going to be the first Wombat in Magic and then was very delightfully um, proven wrong by the fact that there was <laughs> there was a, both a, a legendary animal and also a hilarious old school artwork. Um, there are three Wombats in, in Magic the Gathering. If, now, you, now you know, reader, um, listener. Good. Um, right. Dog Ombra. Oh, yeah. The implications. Yeah. Because this is an enchantment, one and a white, enchantment aura, flash, enchant creature. As long as another player controls the enchanted creature, it can't attack or block. Otherwise, Dog Umbra has Umbra Armor. Umbra Armor being the tra- uh, the translation from Tosum Armor. If the, thing is, if the creature would be destroyed instead, the Umbra is destroyed instead, or the aura is destroyed instead. Now, the implication being that if you put it on your own creature, it can attack or block because it's used to running around on all fours. And the artwork is a guy on all fours running around like some little freaky thing. But the yeah. idea being that if you put it on your opponent's creature, it doesn't know how to be a complete fucking wackadoodle and run around like a dog, so it can't attack or block. <laughs> so it forces it into dog pose, which then makes the other Umbras infinitely more scary. <laughs> S- snake Umbra? What does it make you? All, does it make you snake around on the floor? Octopus Umbra. Octopus. Spider Umbra. Yeah. You know, all of these Umbras become very, very, very suspect when you feel like if you put it on your opponent's creature, it would force it into the shape of the animal. <laughs> Or is it, yes, or is it that it takes on the traits? So you're going to your opponent, sit. <laughs> That's, oh my Play God. Play dead. <gasps> That's so much cooler. Yeah, the artwork <laughs> denotes something very different. Oh, That's, fair that is That is very, very cool. But yeah, that was my, those are my, and again, memification up to a point of where, I like memes of where it doesn't slap you on the head and go, do you get it? Do you get it? Do you yeah. get it? They put something funny on the card and you kind of look over at the first one and you go, yeah, sure. And then you can look back and go, wait, what the well, fuck is this? It's playing with the notions of Umbras. Yeah. That's fun. I want to be a dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, cool. You're going to have to run around like a dog yeah, then. Yeah. <laughs> be a fucking dog then, bro. Yeah, which is quite funny. And again, the implications. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you a numbers question now. Okay, How I, many... thought we're out, I thought we are out of questions. Well, this wasn't a question. And now, now I've, found, I've developed a question because that's the format now. <laughs> How many cards in Magic the Gathering start with the word glimpse? How many start... Right, like... Oh. And I'm going to... They're all... They're not all glimpse of. They're either glimpse of or, or glimpse, glimpse the. the. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to put it... My brain immediately went to something around 10. So I'm going to go with 12. I bet it's lower though. <sighs> you should have gone lower. Damn. But only by one. Nine. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Glimpse of freedom. Glimpse of nature. Glimpse of tomorrow. Glimpse the core. Glimpse the cosmos. Glimpse the future. Glimpse of the sun god. Glimpse the unthinkable. The glimpse the unthinkable I knew off the top, yeah. And the new card... With my art pick of the set. So fucking, it goes so hard. <laughs> Glimpse the impossible. Yeah. Justine Jones, you fucking diamond. You'll be at MC uh, Magic Con Amsterdam. Yep. They're not on the they're not on the website, but they are going. Really? Yeah. Because they've got another artwork in this set as well, Horrific Assault. And yeah. this is this is, I think, if we actually quickly look, does she have any of the um prosperity artwork ones from um fucking you know what i'm talking about um no. outlaws of thunder junction oh because her art style definitely pertains to that so kind justine, of thing. justine jones did predominantly they're most famous for in magic doing a lot of the pencil like uh, dungeon master book artworks for a lot of the dungeons and dragons cards so all of those kind of like uh Pensley, you know, Lazael and Carl. Oh, right, yeah, 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 yeah. They also famously did uh, the Reaper King and the Ur Oh, Dragon. the Secret Lair, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, li- I literally did yeah. look this up the other and day. And Sliverlord, Overlord and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. They also did another Secret Lair, which was um, the with Sharon, uh, Dark Lord and all that kind of stuff. Um, but they have actually got very few just plain inset, non-showcase treatment cards. Well, and this if- is the... This is the, the- 
we don't normally let these artists do main set treatments mm. because um, this isn't the way that magic art looks like. And mm. then if you look at both, I've actually got, if, I'm going to show it around to you as well. If you think about the Ikoria alt treatment, yeah. the Outlaws alt treatment, as you said, the Dungeons and Dragons alt treatment, all of these are much less digital artwork, photorealistic, yeah. which magic was going through a big trend of about five, six years ago. Yeah. And now we're fully in, no, 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 let's bring back the cartoony block artwork yeah, kind of style, style. Like really bring this yeah. back. And this is where artists like like, like um, Justine, um, Wiley Becker, yeah. um, fuck... Oh no, oh no, the one who did all of the fucking jip, 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 jip. I can't remember off the top There's of my head. The, There's the, a lot of really good ones. The Corey in a lot of the uh, Innistrad sort of like key art and all that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Like this is a bit, like, this is going to be coming more and more. But I not think. only is this a sick artwork, for an uncommon, it also has like an incredible story beat. So the glimpse the unthinkable. Dominic Mayer. Dominic Mayer. Thank you. That Dominic was Mayer, yeah. yeah. Well, Dominic Mayer, yeah, does a lot of those kind of high contrast stuff. I'm actually thinking of someone else as well, but there we go. Um, so it's Gisela, as in Angel Gisela from Innistrad and it's the moment just before she loses her mind it's the moment <laughs> that the corruption of Emrakul starts yeah. before she becomes Brizella with yeah. Bruna oh, and the so uh, flavour text is Gisela beheld true divinity and was humbled and the artwork shows Gisela holding her face as her eyes are alight with knowledge and Emrakul's tentacles are bursting through to her skin to say true divinity from an angel because yeah, yeah, yeah. obviously angels are manifestations of mana Sorin even in the set or is it um, the creation of Avacyn or something is his saga for the set so they've seen Sorin try and create an angel they clearly don't have a god figure above them there aren't gods on Innistrad there are demons but there are no gods because yeah. if there was they, they would have forsaken them long ago <laughs> but it's quite funny for them to say, to see true divinity like even an angel a construct of pure manner sees Eldrazi as true divinity as gods, yeah that's incredible um this is a common not uncommon i apologize this might be one of the only commons i'm going to get signed by an artist <laughs> yeah I've got a f- so i have a regular version that i literally had arrive in the mail today that looks stunning and i've got a, a foil version that i'm specifically going to take to get signed yeah because yeah, it's gonna pop Big same. like fuck. if this has a play mat i'm absolutely buying it. yeah um i mean the card effect is pretty on the nose as well so exile the top three cards of your library you may play those cards until uh cards this turn so impulsive draw at the beginning of the next end step if any of those cards remain exiled put them onto your uh, into your graveyard then create zero one color cell drowsy spawn yeah. token for each card put this way so it's Loki, like so much utility like for a common because worst case scenario you pay three mana to ramp three and put th- a mill three and they get put three put, bodies on the field because they put it into your great yeah blockers mana you like, mill three ramp three crazy. body three yeah. for three mana for a common in Prosper, you're also getting. You're obviously, you're able like in, in any Exile car, in any Exile decks, which are all running red anyway. You've yeah. got the new Pia, you've got the Foul Dawn, whatever her name is, the Wolf one, and obviously Prosper. They all run this because it's it doesn't just give you it now. Yeah. But then if you don't use them, they go to the graveyard, so you can maybe recur them later, and then you get the bodies and the mana for the next turn. Yeah. This is such a cool version of this, this effect. This is going into my Cody uh, no permanence deck. Nice, yeah, because you polymorph can then polymorph deck. all of them. Because I can polymorph the tokens into the permanent, the only permanents in the set, which are the twelve creatures that are in that deck mm. or I can use them to ramp into those creatures if Cody isn't on the field to just yeah, play they're super them super expensive right they're super exactly, expensive yeah. the idea is I'm trying to cheat them but like the, the flavour of it being like either she gains this knowledge that she kind of glimpses for an instant this thing coming off or the, the top, influence takes over or the influence takes over mm. the spawn and if you compare this card to, I'm gushing about this fucking card if you compare this card to glimpse the unthinkable even in the colour pie this idea of like a lot of these kind of eldritch horror I've seen too much truthy shit come in demir colours because it's mill related mill related it's your related. mind crumbling yeah. whereas this is the red version of that which is the the power of the knowledge makes your kind of fucking senses explode yeah this isn't a deterioration of yourself it it's gives you access exploding outwards. it gives you access to yeah. that knowledge rather that knowledge overtaking you you're being pushed into that knowledge yeah that's that's a really cool i idea. mean this is this is a fucking common i, know. I it, actually listed it as a rare when i was putting down all of my list of cards i need to buy i put it in the rares and i wondered why i couldn't find and it and th- this might be my art and flavor pick of the mm. set Big well, time. I don't. So it's funny because I also had Justin Jones as my art, just but I knew you, I knew you were going to pick it. <laughs> so my other one, and this is kind of semi-controversial because we really shat on this last time. Profile artworks are back, and this time, okay, they're actually good. Well, now, <laughs> now I, that's my opinion. You shat on them. Did I shit on them? 
I like because to. I like to always. I, mean, I always like. I always like to implicate you in huh. my in my negative opinions because then it stops me being alone in them. Because kind of weirdly, following on from this Gisella, Gisella card I just spoke about, the Gisella profile artwork from the last time is literally sleeves of one of my decks. I mean, one of my decks. I've got so, a foil so one in, in a deck, and it's utterly beautiful. Yeah, it's stunning. Yeah. yeah. So these, I don't know if it's just because we've got way more non-humans. You've got <laughs> a bear. <laughs> Kudo just looks so dignified. It's so funny. You've got bears, demons, plants. You've got fucking elder giants, dragons. Like they fill they fill the space way way more. Like there's much less negative space. There's much less. It's just a guy in profile. I think there's maybe one or two that I'm like. Yeah, I'd rather have the other I th- well, version. Well, I think your big problem from memory was that, especially when it came to like you know Kai Car, was like it's they're not interesting on profile. Yeah, you're also you're not giving it additional information to where they're from. But obviously, all of these come in their original forms anyway. And I think all of their original artworks are fine. But for certain ones like Perlier, yeah, the red's a bit overpowering. But also, the original artwork's really muted. So to have this real popping, and again, in your command zone, I know this isn't a commander set, but in your command zone, these feel right at home because it's a really big version of your character in profile. This is who I'm playing. Yeah. Look at them. Look at them. They won't look at you because they're looking left, hmm. but look at them. <laughs> so yeah, I think this is a real turn up. Again, some of them, some of my highlights are uh, Imskir, Iron Eater. He's great. He's the, he's the, 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 the demon. Um, Flage looks phenomenal. It's, you can't quite really see it in the main artworks. It's quite far back in the distance because it's a fucking Titan. Mm. So it takes up most of the horizon. In this, you get a little close up of his face. Brea in this, weird enough, has almost uh, has similar artwork to her original artwork. So if you didn't like the new artwork, you still have an alternate option to play with that's not the same as it was before. Um, again, I just I think he's really cool. Six, I love yellow. Having yellow in the background, then it pops um, Six's foliage to feel more autumnal and feel more like it's uh, like a more yellow effect, like it's going to molt soon. I mean, yeah, I don't know. To, to take something that I originally didn't like and then go, oh, okay, this is actually really cool. Um, yeah. It's, well, it's they nice are doing all this for you, darling. Thank so. you. I do feel like uh, my, my zero letters to Watsi are being heard. So <laughs> this is great. <laughs> the, the last card I wanted to talk about, because um, we're coming up to time, I guess, Yeah. Um, was, uh, oh my gosh, thank you, phone, uh, Shadow, <laughs> Shadow of the Second Sun. Yes. Which is four blue blue enchant player. It's an enchant player aura, which is always there. But it's not a curse. It's not a curse. It's not an enchantment. It's an aura. At the beginning of enchanted players, post-combat main phase, there is an additional beginning main phase after this phase. Phase? Well, we've seen this text box before. Yeah. On Sphinx of the Second What does it Sun. do in this one to really help you out, though? Uh, oh, I don't know. Oh, it gives you reminder text. It gives you reminder <laughs> text, Andy. <laughs> Just in case, so you don't fuck it up this time. I had a game recently. You were there, you yeah. know. Were you there or were you on the table next to me? I was on the table next to you. You were on the table next to me, where I had my own. This was my Polymorph deck again. I was playing the Sphinx version. I had my own Sphinx of the Second Son in hand, but I managed to steal someone else's Sphinx of the Second Son out of their deck with my Sphinx Ambassador. I was playing a Sphinx deck. Um, so I had two. Such cool. My Sphinx to steal your Sphinx. Two Sphinx of the Second Sons on the battlefield at the same time, which meant I got two beginning steps at the end Combo. of my, my beginning of my end step. Now, A, I love the fact that they've done a ridiculous card again. Mm. So you can have two effects in one deck, which is nuts. My my question is, I guess, this is another question card. Uh, so the artwork by Danny Schwartz. I, this could be Kaladesh, it could be not. I don't think it is, because it's not particularly like uh, North African or Egyptian-y. But it is like strange um i'm gonna say hieroglyphs as a shorthand not hieroglyphs literally i'm sure sorry i feel that's slightly culturally inappropriate but you know what i mean symbology on the floor the two shadows going across they are holding a spear which have which has two horns Mm -hmm. but they're not bolos horns so i don't necessarily think it is alan kett but i guess my, my my thing is is that is this a reference in any other way to Sphinx of the Second Sun? Which, and in turn, was Sphinx of the Second so, Sun a reference to Approach the Second Sun? Because they're different abilities, but they all seem very closely linked by their themology. Do you know so what I mean? the reference artwork-wise is to Temporal Manipulation. Oh, for sure. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, you See yes, what yes, I mean? Yes, yes, so yes. it has that very similar look of being on the dial face, yeah. but then it obviously has the implication of Amon Ket with And it. also the, the, yeah, the double sort of like... Yeah, shadow. the idea of having another ver- another, ter- another turn I, I guess my question is, this feels very much less like you need to do an, uh, a, this version of this, and more like, take all the ideas and themes of this thing yeah. and put it on a card. That, the again, artwork 
artwork is again another quite flat boldly colored artwork is also fucking sick mm. as well again i think these are the kind of sets of where normally i'm like i don't like ancillary sets because they feel pointless whereas now they're actually filling ancillary sets with even more lore than mm. sometimes a regular set does this has more lore in a set i think than say midnight hunt does mm. as an argument because midnight hunt is only showing a little pocket yeah. of one particular plane whereas this is showing you across the multiverse across various different times lots of little bits of things it keeps stuff relevant as well. There's mm. a, there's a, is it? Oh my god, I can't. Is it Argos or something? There's a card which is a Phyrexian card, which has like an Elish Norn vibe to it, and a Phyrexian card in a set which is full of Eldrazi, and it keeps. It means that we can have these villains or have mm. these characters be relevant for the people who are fans of them, especially as we're mostly only staying on planes now for one set. It gives the breathing room yeah, to these Yeah, you can places. then have a bit more. Yeah, you won't. Wh- where else were you going to get Plage or Flage? I think it's Flage. Yeah. It's definitely Flage. <laughs> where the fuck? Also, where the fuck is the Necrobloom from? Because it's horrible, sketchy as fuck. Don't like it. I don't. Th- it's not it's Ixalan. It's not Ixalan. It's not yeah. Ixalan because I think we got it right. That I think the Nexus, the spell, the Skull Spore Nexus, Nexus, Nexus was, I think, a, a, a human. I think it was the Coin Empire repurposed technology and then they fucked it up and they created this horrible thing they couldn't control. Uh, but the being a 2-7 format, anyway, the Necrobloom is also really scary. <laughs> I don't know where it's from. The only last final, final thing, because uh, we always forget to talk about them, lands. Mm. The full art lands in this set are phenomenal. There are six of them. Five of them have titans in the background. It makes, the swamp makes a, makes Emrakul feel as scary as she she should. Yes. Um, yeah, okay, the other ones also. I mean, the plains has um, Umalog, Ulamog roaming across it. Um, there are also slightly different interpretations of Kozilek across the island in the forest. Slightly different interpretations of, of Ulamog across the plains and the mountain. Um, you can even see the warping of the mountain when when, when the Eldrazi goes. But it's a really cool perspective take. It reminds me a lot of uh, Brothers War, of where mm. they did the big giant mechs. Um, but this time, instead of being metal, it's flat. Yeah. or whatever you call Aldrazi I don't know if it counts as flesh um, but yeah cool very cool good set surprisingly good set do you know what yes yeah, supplemental sets I've always been a little bit like eh, it's just a cash grab to pump up like sales and for power creep but actually this one yeah. this one this feels like EDH in 20, 2018. That's the problem, right? <laughs> I think the issue is because it does a lot of things so well, the main gripe that people have with this is that it doesn't feel focused to what it should do. The problem with the last two Modern Horizon sets is that when they did do a focus on, on Modern and then also have a little bit of everything else, Modern got ruined twice over. <laughs> yeah. This is still going to ruin Modern in some fashion, I'm sure. Like I, th- I think they've done a good thing of holding back. You don't want more griefs. You don't want more solitudes in the format. Um, and they've done just enough to kind of go here are some here's some cool cool stuff you can mess around with but then clearly the rest of the set has to go somewhere and do something yeah you know so at that point you might as well give a little bit of something to the Vorthos and for Vorthosians you might as well give a little bit of something to the commander crowd I know everything's for the commander crowd but the big thing is everyone now plays commander it's been the natural way that the game has developed unfortunately if you want a super sweaty tight competitive game you can play other games yeah magic is maybe forming into something that i think i think edh was always going to be the natural formation of it of this personal expression of how to 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 to, to um form this 30 30 year old twenty five thousand card game system mm. is it's going to be more self-expression you know it's going to be hopefully a bit more flavor instead of let's try and tighten the screws on this two drop to make it you know a four a, a four of in every deck i don't know Anyway, Modern Horizons, good job. Magic's cool. Magic's very cool. Magic's very cool. And that's not to say like they did a lot of, there's those more bestowed things, there's those more affinity things. There's like, they've done really cool strokes. There's a fucking colossal dead dread mask. They even put the dread more meme in the, in the set. Like there's lots of cool stuff in this set if you don't want to take anything too seriously. And maybe that's the bottom line in Magic recently is, guys, just can everyone just stop taking everything so seriously? It's a fucking game. It's supposed to be enjoyable. You're supposed to be able to kind of escape into it. Start making everything some fucking argument. I like arguing though. Yeah, but only when like the person's listening and you know you're going to win it. Not you, that's me. <laughs> One of us has to win. We can't both win the argument. Well, we don't always have to be arguing. I feel like that. Oh. Mm. We've been doing it wrong for 13, yeah, 14 years. <laughs> um, last week, where the fuck did Eldrazi and fairies be on the same plane? There weren't fairies on Innistrad, there weren't fairies on Zendikar. Nah, the, the multiverse is old. So there's Eldrazi and other planes. <gasps> duh, duh, duh. Let us know what you think of the set. 
<laughs> on Twitter, formerly known as X. I'm doing it the other way around. Yeah. Uh, fuck, fuck Elon Musk. Fuck you, Elon Musk. Uh, <laughs> yeah, at... let's hide the likes because I like some really weird shit. Oh, God. I know. At MT Flavoring. <laughs> Flavoring with an OU. Uh, emails go to mtflavoring at gmail.com. My personal X account is at Andy Manface. Nathan's yours is. At the Fox in the Moon. Oh dear. We will be at Magic Con Amsterdam. We will. Come along. Oh. Come come play match with us. We're not doing a meet and greet. We're there to meet and greet you. I mean, we're just there to hang out. We like, are literally, honest, yeah. honest to God, we're like, we're there as punters yeah like, and um, you will keep an eye on on the twitter x account so if you do like just poke a little thing go hey, oh i will be going fucking nuts yeah, like, by the way yeah, i mean yeah. i'm in i'm in town i wouldn't mind a game with you hello like we're like, gonna both bring our juicy shit to, to knock you about with <laughs> and then obviously you get lose to your stupid Uber i mean we'll deck. be we'll be there to see our friends on the main stage rocking their sh- shit as well exactly. like yeah i mean you know adam the gathering's gonna be there christian gregory's gonna be there tim willoughby's gonna be there like there's some really cool folks that are gonna be hanging out this is the first time i think we get to properly like like rub elbows with with a big, the big part of the community. I mean, obviously, like, Load and Ready Run's going to be there. Mm-hmm. Game Nights is going to be there. It's going to be really interesting to see all these people that I feel so far away in a game that feels so close actually be in the same room and as And I you. like the fact, I know a lot of them, like, are, to be cynical, are getting things paid for the X, Y, and Z, but I like the fact a lot of them are coming over to Europe and, like, yep. that Watsy is recognising, like, I mean, Barcelona was such a huge hit last summer. Massive, yeah. I know London hasn't had a, a magic con, but there's, they are consistent, um, what do you call it, command fests mm-hmm. in Birmingham and London every year. And I like the fact that Europe is getting getting recognised because there are some really great folks in Europe that love Magic Gap. Yeah. Alright, thank you so much for listening. This has been Magic the Flavouring. We'll see you soon.